Hey there! My name is Justin, aka Shanky, and this is Shanky JRPGs. Today, I want to talk about 10 PlayStation 1 RPGs that need to be added to the PlayStation Plus Classics Library. The PlayStation 1 era was what some people might consider the golden era of JRPGs. With legendary games like Final Fantasy VII and Grandia, some of my best gaming memories came from the original PlayStation. When PlayStation Plus was being fused with PlayStation Now, one of the biggest selling points of the premium tier was PlayStation Classics. However, if you take a look at the RPGs available in the Classics section of PlayStation Plus, I won't sugarcoat it, it's sad and pathetic. There are a grand total of 5 PlayStation 1 RPGs available. While there are generally some amazing games, there are a boatload of more games that deserve to be added. Today, I'm here to talk about the top 10 RPGs that deserve to be added to the Classics Library. Before we get started, make sure to show your love by smashing that like button, subscribe to my channel, and tell me what RPGs from the PlayStation 1 that you'd love to have added to the PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5 Classics Library. Anyways, let's ice that drink, pop that corn, and let's talk about 10 PlayStation 1 JRPGs that deserve to be added to the classic library of PlayStation Plus. Xenogears, released in 1998, follows the story of Fei Fong Wong, among others, as they journey across the world to end the powerful rule of Solaris and uncover various mysteries concerning their world. Xenogears is commonly known as one of the best RPGs to ever exist, and it's a crime that we haven't seen a re-release of this game outside of the classic on the PlayStation 3. Xenogears was interesting using its combo system when on foot and fighting with giant robots known as Gears, giving two incredibly different combat systems. With the Xeno series getting incredibly popular thanks to Xenoblade Chronicles as well as its sequels, people deserve to see where this game series got started. Tales of Eternia, localized as Tales of Destiny 2, released in 2001, is where I feel the Tales series finally started to gain some traction as a unique RPG series. In Tales of Eternia, you take the role of Reed and his friends as they try to figure out the origin of a strange girl named Merity that fell from the land of Celestia. The gameplay of Tales of Eternia is what makes it stand out. It's where the Tales series finally got faster paced and almost felt like a fighting game and an RPG mixed together. It also has some of the best villains, as well as some of the most heart-wrenching stories that the Tales series has to offer. Parasite Eve, released in 1998, was actually based on a 1995 Japanese science fiction horror novel by Hideaki Sena. It follows the story of Aya Brea, an NYPD rookie who goes on a blind date to an opera where everyone spontaneously combusts. Yeah, I haven't trusted opera since I started playing this game. Parasite Eve is quite interesting as it takes place in the modern day and your equipment are firearms that you can actually modify to increase in strength and add certain effects like acid or fire. Honestly, the best way I can explain Parasite Eve is it's Resident Evil if it had RPG elements. Definitely an incredibly unique take on an RPG and a blast to play through. And hey, if you're enjoying this video so far, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe if you want more JRPG centric lists and reviews. Legend of Lagaya, released in 1999, is the first game in a very short running series. Somewhat similar to the Xenogears combat system, Legend of Lagaya used a combo system where using each of your character's attacks in a specific order would result in a unique attack doing more damage. Yeah, sure, the story isn't anything to write home about, and it is very Final Fantasy esque with the plot of awakening the Genesis trees to stop the mist that is causing the collapse of civilization. Though I'm pretty sure Final Fantasy IX took this plotline and made it their own, but Legend of the Gaia is another one of those games that's very often talked about in a very positive way, and on many top RPG lists, and for a good reason. Strangely, it didn't do all that well in Japan, with a score of only 27 out of 40 in Famitsu, which is probably why this series was so short lived. Well, that and Lagaya 2 Dual Saga sold terribly not even hitting 100,000 copies sold worldwide. Threads of Fate, or Do Prism, released in 2000, has to be one of the most wholesome action RPGs on the PlayStation. 
In Threads of Fate, you take the role of either Rue, a hunter that can transform into monsters, or Mint, who can combine elements to cast magic spells. I remember really enjoying Threads of Fate and how it was incredibly different. It was just whimsical with the art style and had a crazy nonsensical story at times. That being said, even with the wacky story and comical characters, Threads of Fate is one of those games that seemingly has been forgotten to time, and I would love to see it do well as a PlayStation Classic, as if it did well, maybe we get a new Threads of Fate game. Brave Fencer Musashi, released in 1998 by Squaresoft, is an action RPG where you follow the story of Musashi, who gets isekai into a parallel world where you must defend the Alukani Kingdom from the Thirst Quencher Empire. I'll be honest, I haven't really played much of Brave Fencer Musashi, but from the little bit I did play, I remember it playing incredibly well. I also adore the art style this game has, even if the voice acting leaves a bit to be desired, but bad voice acting makes a game more enjoyable, doesn't it? I don't know if that's just a me thing, but I feel atrocious voice work amplifies the enjoyment of a game substantially. Maybe I'm just weird like that. What are your thoughts on especially bad voice acting? Let me know in the comments below. Breath of Fire 3, released in 1998. Okay, before we get into talking about Breath of Fire 3, what the heck is wrong with you, Capcom? You have this absolute stellar IP at your disposal, but you just ignore it. Yeah, okay, sure, Dragon Quarter was average at best, but you insult us by making the sixth installment a mobile gacha game? You know what that is? That's disrespectful to the fans of the series that have been supporting you for years on end. Shame on your family, shame on your dog, and you know what? Shame on your potato farm. There's my rant for the day. Anyways, Breath of Fire 3 is easily the best Breath of Fire game, and while it was released on PSP on the Vita Store, this game is no longer accessible on any consoles. Breath of Fire 3 was actually my first experience with the franchise, and it was completely out of luck. I just randomly ran into it in EB Games. I'm glad I picked it up when I did though, because it's such a great turn-based RPG. Capcom, I'm still mad at you for abandoning Breath of Fire. I wonder if you're aware that there's more to your company than Monster Hunter and Street Fighter. Oh hey, we're at the working designs part of this list. Easily the best localization company of the late 90s and early 2000s. Lunar Silver Star Story Complete released in 1996 and Lunar Eternal Blue Complete released in 2000. They are among some of my favorite RPGs of all time. When Grandia got added to the PlayStation Classics, I was hoping Lunar was next in line. However, unfortunately it didn't happen. Of course, I also expected the same thing when Grandia got an HD remaster. Safe to say, I'm still a little bit disappointed. In Lunar Silver Star Story, you follow the story of Alex on a journey to become a Dragon Master. And in Lunar 2 Eternal Blue, which takes place a thousand years after Silver Star Story, you take the role of Hero, who encounters and falls in love with a strange lady named Lucia and journeys to protect the world from an entity named Zophar. The Lunar games exemplify everything the term classic RPG stands for, and it features the glory that is the working design's localization, complete with pop culture references that add a certain flair to it, as well as some of the most beautiful voice lines in existence. I'm still holding out that one day we'll get these games ported to PlayStation 4 and 5. Alundra, released in 1998, is a spiritual successor to Landstalker on the Sega Genesis. Alundra at face value might look like a blatant Zelda clone, but it's oh so much more than just that. Another game published by Working Design, so you can expect that glorious localization, but it also has some of the most ungodly difficult puzzles ever conceived. I mentioned it way back when I talked about puzzles in RPGs and if they need to be brought back. Yeah, Zelda games have puzzles, but some of the puzzles in Alundra make you wonder how they can possibly be solved without solutions available at the ready. That being said, Alundra is one of those games that is incredibly hard, but it's due to the difficulty that finishing a dungeon or boss fight gives an immense feeling of satisfaction. Unfortunately, Alundra 2 didn't get the same reception. It's pretty bad, but the first game absolutely needs to become available again. And finally, the final game I feel deserves to be added to PlayStation Classics. Vanguard Bandits, released in 2000, and again, published by Working Designs. 
I actually talked about this game in a collaboration with David Vink RPGs and why I felt it went under the radar. The best way I can explain Vanguard Bandits is... Vanguard Bandits is like the love child of Escaflone and Fire Emblem, if it had the humor of Lunar. Vanguard Bandits is a strategy RPG that takes place in a very medieval setting. However, the twist is that everyone fights in giant mechas, known as All-Terrain Armored Combatants, or ATAX. Vanguard Bandits uses the same sort of relationship system as Fire Emblem titles, where you can raise relationship values and it gives more interaction between characters, giving some nice character development. Vanguard Bandits is one of my favorite strategy RPGs, and it was relatively unknown as it was drowned out by so many other games coming out in the year 2000. So there you have it. There are so many RPGs that deserve to be added to the PlayStation Classics. Do you agree with my list? Or did I miss any PS1 games that deserve to be added to the PlayStation Classic service? Make sure to let me know in the comments below. If you had a good time here, enjoy the video, and want more RPG lists and reviews, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to my channel, and ding that notification bell so you don't miss a single video. Thanks for watching, thank you for your support, and as always, have a wonderful day. Super Retro Force.